What's going on growers? It's James Prizioni coming to you live from Jersey. Right now I'm in the food forest, but not everything that I grow in here is solely for food. So today I want to share with you a plant that's a medicinal with amazing properties. Let's go! When growing a garden like this, sometimes there's no separation between things being medicinal and food. They can be one and the same. Because you're growing things like tomatoes, peppers, uh, cucumbers, all these kinds of things. Not only can you eat, but they'll encourage your health. They've got great vitamins, great minerals, and a lot of the things that you can't get from unnatural foods. Right next to me here, I want to show you this beautiful tomato plant before we get into the medicinal for the day. The medicinal for today is not necessarily edible, but some of the things that it can do, it's just, it blew my mind, and that's one of the reasons I'm so excited to show you guys it. But look at this thing, over six feet tall. Just fantastic. We're only in mid-July too, so I can't, I can't even imagine how tall this thing's gonna get. But it just continues pumping out flowers, more and more fruit. So excited for that. So again, we're in a food forest, so the foundation is food. Like these blackberries here. Some of these are really starting to ripen. Got this kale in front of me here. So this is one of those plants that's a blending of both food and medicine because not only does, is it good for our health, good vitamin C, good cancer fighting properties, but it's also absolutely delicious. Mm. But today's focus is, is on one herb specifically. But we grow a lot of herbs in here. This is some basil, and we've got a number of different kinds of basil in the garden this year. Right here, we've got one kind of basil, and basil is one of my favorite herbs to grow. Not only to eat it and to use it as a medicinal, but also as a companion for my tomatoes. Tuck us in and come check it out, give it a sniff. So I like, I like to grow it next to a lot of my tomatoes and underneath them. And when you grow the tomatoes like this up the trellis, you have the space for it. So as you can see down here, we've got the borage, which is a great herb, but then we've got another basil here. This is a purple basil. This is one of my favorites, the color of it. I think it's just so striking, so beautiful. I've also started to get a couple of tomatoes. So here's one of the first tomatoes. We've got the sun gold cherry, which is my favorite cherry tomato. But before I get too off track, which I happen to do a lot when I'm in the food forest, there's so much to see and have fun with. We've got another purple variegated basil here. And then we've got the curl leaf purple basil. Then we've got your typical basil up front there. I think that's a sweet basil. Maybe the Genovese, actually, I'm not 100% positive, but I just plant so many different kinds of basil, it's hard to keep track sometimes. And the tomatoes are doing well, but that's not the herb. The basil isn't the one I'm focused on and one I wanna show you. It's right over here. As you can see, it's hidden underneath uh, one of my tomato plants and next to my cucumbers. Tuck will lead the way for us. So this right here um, is the plant I wanna show you. I'm actually gonna pop one of these flowers into my mouth, chew on it, and what happens, it, it might blow you away. I've actually never tried it before, but I've read about it a lot. So this is something I've really been looking forward to try. I've been waiting um, all winter when I found out about it, all spring and all beginning of the summer for them to be ready. So let's grab one. This herb right here, the one that I've been so excited to grow, and I planted this thing from seed, so I've slowly just been watching it throughout the past months. This is actually called the toothache plant, also known as buzz buttons or electric daisy. It's in the daisy family, and some countries actually eat the leaves. They eat them raw, throw them in salads, or they cook them up. So you can eat the leaves, you can uh, chew on the flowers, and what it actually does is exactly what it says. It's a toothache plant, so it helps with toothaches. It numbs your mouth, and it also makes you salivate a lot. So not only does this help with the pain of having a toothache, but it's actually also antifungal and antibacterial. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of these, pop these in our mouth, and see what happens. I got this plant, or these seeds, from Baker Creek, and there's two different varieties you can get. There's a bullseye one, and there's a yellow one. So this is the yellow one right here. And you don't have to eat it fresh like this. You can actually dry it and put it into a tea, or you can even dry it and make it into a tincture. But I don't really feel like waiting. I wanna try it out and see what it's like. So let's actually try it right here. Has like a typical green flavor. Almost reminds me a little carroty, but wow. Oh my gosh. I'm already getting that numbness. Definitely making me salivate. My tongue is almost completely numb now. Oh my gosh. I probably shouldn't have swallowed it, but I did it out of excitement. Oh wow. My tongue is completely numb. I can feel it in my throat a little now. It's odd because I almost can't talk, kind of. I feel like my mouth is dry, but I'm salivating. So, oh my gosh. My tongue is completely numb, but super tingly, hard to talk. They say this numbing lasts for like 15 minutes. Oh my gosh, now I know why they call it electric daisy. It's making me hard to swallow a lot, but 
salivate a lot. Very unique feeling, it almost feel, feels like when you have like a piece of gum that's super, super cold. Oh, it feels like electric. Maybe a little similar to like Pop Rock, but wow. It's pretty cool. That's just an incredible thing about plants. Now it's a little easier to talk. I've got that numbness. If I had a toothache, I could see how it would work. I think it would be better maybe as a, like, I, like they say as a, ooh, beautiful monarch. But I think it would be great as a, maybe a little tea to make it not so strong. Probably not supposed to swallow it like I did, but really I can, the perfect name for it is the electric daisy. I don't think the toothache plant really gives it justice because the uniqueness of it, but something I, I really love to have in the garden. I'm excited I got to try it. And I'm excited I brought you along for it. That was the first time I've ever had one too, so I didn't know what it was gonna, what it was gonna be like, but it's making me almost like hiccup a little bit. Oh man, that thing was stronger than I even imagined. No, I'm just kidding, it wasn't that bad, but Tuck needed some water. I figured I'd grab him some from the hose. Thirsty boy? This is well water too, so, so it's not city water, so it's pretty good stuff. But he needs some fresh water. I wanted to make sure he was getting his water out here. I could just bring him a, a cup or something out here, but that thing is, it's so hot out today, and it's so dry, there's so much sun, that if I brought a water out here, the thing would just heat up quick. So we want to keep, try to make sure we're keeping them hydrated. And the water that comes from the well, deep, deep into the ground is so cool. So nice and cold. It's almost like, a, you know, getting a fresh ice water compared to the temperature out here. So we'll let him get some of that water. And again, we'll, we'll have a little ourselves because I mean that, uh, that toothache plant, woo, wow. That thing was even more potent and more powerful than, than I could have imagined. Again, I can understand why they call that thing electric daisy. It felt like there was electricity running through my mouth. And the flavor wasn't great, but I can see just uh, um, the usefulness of that and how it can have a great function if you did have a toothache or something. That's what I love about gardening is you can turn your backyard not into not only into like a food pantry, your own natural food pantry, but also your your own medicine cabinet, growing right in your own backyard, reliable, safe, and natural. And another thing about that plant, which is one of the fringe benefits, is how excited it got me to get out here and to garden and to grow that. So I suggest you guys grow things every single year that's gonna get you more excited, that's gonna encourage you to get out into the garden. And I think personally that that plant um, allowed the whole entire garden to, to do better because I'm always coming out here checking it, seeing if they're ready. While I'm doing that, I'm out working on other things in the garden. I might notice something, realize I have to do it. So to have something to look forward to that you truly wanna grow, I think is a great motivation to get you into the garden more, to get you uh, get your hands dirty and increase actually your overall output in the garden. And I've heard a quote and someone talks about how what you focus on increases. So if you're focused on trying to get that plant, if you're focused on trying to produce a better garden, then it's gonna get better and better every year. You gotta focus on the good things, not on the negative things. If you're focusing on all the negative things, then, all, then your mind is going your subconscious mind is gonna create those scenarios, those negative scenarios. And as opposed to if you focus on the good, on the great things, on production, then your subconscious mind is automatically gonna be working towards creating those things in the physical reality. So I think that's important. If you guys are enjoying the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and check out the merchandise down in the description and underneath it. Uh, grab some of your Food Forest shirts, be a part of Team Grow, and we'll keep on growing. I'm in the new Food Forest now, and in here I have another one of the same plant, the toothache plant, the yellow variety right here. So this one's got even more flowers on it, doing even better. I've got some more tomatoes behind me here. Here's the ricin trob tomato. Like I previously mentioned, you wanna grow things that are gonna encourage you to be out in the garden. It can just be tomatoes, but different varieties, things you've never tried before, something you're looking forward to actually get, something that's gonna, again, encourage you to put the work in. And another thing about this plant is its function. It's functional as a toothache plant, but what we love to do in permaculture is to find things with multiple functions. So, or to use plants multi-dimensional. So here we have some garlic, some of the ones that are left over that we didn't harvest. We've got more to harvest, but uh, we left just a few of them in here. So this garlic not only will feed us, but it's also gonna work as an anti-pest um, anti, uh, for these tomatoes here. So it's gonna help keep some of the pest away. So not only is it a food, but it's also ser for serving a function. So in permaculture, we like to call that stacking functions. The more functions you can stack, the better off you are. That's why we love being in a food forest because it's not just a one dimensional thing like a standard garden can be. So before I leave, I wanted to just try one more of those uh, 
electric daisies. Uh, I think that's the best name for it. So I want to try one more of those electric daisies, chew it for longer, and then actually spit it out and not swallow it. Again, it's not unhealthy to eat, but I think I just, I think I kind of wussied out a little bit and didn't get the full impact of it. Okay, let's do it. Let's go for round two. Let me grab a fresh one right here. And let's hit that electric daisy one more time. Let's find a good one. This one looks about ready here. Pop that off. This time I'm going to chew it and spit it out. So let's see how it goes. I'm gonna try to chew for longer. Already getting the numbing. So unique. I'm not seeing a difference between the two plants. I don't wanna spit it out too early because I, I wanna get the full effect. Let me spit it out now. Okay, I just spit it out. I'm gonna lick my lips a little, get that numbing. Definitely strong on my tongue right now. Now it's really starting to kick in. Oh, so unique. So just electric is, like I said, definitely the best way to describe it. Fun to try. I think it would be hilarious if you brought someone through your garden, you gave them a couple of tomatoes, try this, try this. They love the tomatoes. Try the carrot, try this, try the basil, try this. You've got their, um, You've got their attention, you've, you've gained their trust. And then throw one of the electric daisies in there. Tell them to spit it out after. You might just blow them away. These are the kind of things that we can use as tools to get more people growing. That's the idea behind this whole entire channel. Get as many people growing as possible to, re to um, just encourage this whole entire state, country, world to grow your own food, to go as natural as you can and get back to the way things are supposed to be, in my opinion. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share this with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merchandise. And it's definitely better when you spit it out. I don't have that deep down my throat. I'm not getting like that hiccuping like I did before. So if you're gonna try the electric daisy, do it the right way, learn from Prigioni, don't swallow the thing. See you guys in the next one. Talking James Prigioni, we out.